In case you didn't know what you were in for, cops. It's it's a movie about cops. And if you can't tell, not in America. So actually the word cop might not work. Constable's on patrol. Better? Also, it's cop sirens throughout history because Edgar Wright and Simon Pegg don't believe in doing anything half-arsed. And right from Nicholas Angel's first scene, we know what he's about and where he enforces the law, or service, or ser services the police, and language is tricky. Also, this picture is literally the shot from this scene. Again, full arsed on two second jokes. And advanced cycling. <laughs> Intensity. Garth Jennings, director of Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Really working overtime on these operation names. We got Shakedown, Crackdown, Showdown, and Takedown. We're making you sergeant. <laughs> Bilbo slash Declan, the mirror universe Liz, also narrated this opening, which actually makes sense, almost like it's part of his review for when Angel comes in to hear about his transfer. You want me to get the chief inspector to come all the way down here? Kenneth! I love that each step up in seniority is also a step up in actor fame level, at least in the UK. Americans probably had no idea who Steve Coogan was at the time, or maybe they'd seen Night at the Museum. And Martin Freeman wasn't quite the household name yet, except for Love Actually and Hitchhikers fans, but Davy Jones and Victor are well known. Plus, the movies Freeman is in. Huh. And as I said in Shaun of the Dead, pretty much when you need a scary guy, you get Bill Nye. And apparently it was Bill's request to add this little evil nose twitch, which makes me love him and also hope to never meet him all at the same time. It's me. I know, I'm at work. I know, I'm outside. What's the situation? You know the situation. No, I, I meant here. <laughs> it's the same style of joke from Shaun of the Dead, where each stage has a further reveal that changes the context of the conversation. I know, explaining jokes is the best. Prepare for more. Janine, I've been transferred. I'm moving away for a while. I'm not Janine. But how could you miss Kate's eyes? Kate Blanchett is always a win, even when uncredited. Does Bob look like the kind of person I'd go out with? It's Dave. Hello there. <laughs> Bob and Dave may look entirely different, but they sure speak alike. Hello there. This is actually one of many wins that acknowledge Edgar and Simon went to great pains to make a realistic cop movie as much as a hilarious one. This is what real CSIs look like so they don't contaminate the scene. You just can't switch off, Nicholas. You do realize that window is broken from the inside. Proving her point within the minute. Ooh, that police car transition. You've seen this traveling scene in movies a million times. We just had seven minutes of a prologue where the main character's life is introduced and it ends with a massive change. This scene is 9.9 .9 times out of 10 some overhead footage of a car crossing bridges set to some upbeat traveling music. Often you don't even need the actual actor at all. Instead, we get Nicholas and his peace lily traveling by train with jarringly quick cuts while he's leaving the city, showing us the ever waning service on his phone. As we get closer to the country, cuts are a little longer and we see a couple of important landmarks for later on. Another example example of Edgar never just pushing a simple set piece off on a second unit, and complete with a day-to-night match cut again. Shaun of the Dead had callbacks and repeated lines of dialogue, but Hot Fuzz takes it to a whole new level. For instance, these swords on the wall. Oh, I see. It's uh, fascism. Fascism. Wonderful. <laughs> That's the correct face you make when someone thinks fascism is wonderful. Newspaper. It's not ours, though. <laughs> yeah, we're not big fans of the local fish river, are we, Mayor? The number of insane details in this movie you don't notice until the fourth time through, and then on the seventh, you finally hear the pool ball rolling down the ramp like thunder when Angel asks about the fish wrapper. And it's because their actual issue, the complaining about Messenger, the one they believe he should be murdered over, is said right in their introduction. They listed her age as 55. When I'm actually 53. That and the blatant misspelling of bypass. I don't think I understand. Why can't they just drink butterbeer? Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, all my fans from the UK, feel free to leave a comment making fun of America in the same style. I'm actually not sure what it would be. What is America's Harry Potter? <laughs> Sanford's brightest braces and most prepubescent voice. When's your birthday? Uh -huh. If they're in here, it stops them getting into trouble out there. Yeah, the way we see it, it's all for the greater good. Ha! Something tells me that's never said just once. The greater good. My goodness, eighth time through and I finally recognized Julia Deakins, aka Yvonne's mum, aka the landlady Marsha Klein. There are actually so many self-referential moments that they ended up cutting an entire subplot where one of these hoodie kids, Gabriel, turns out to be the grandson of Tom Weaver. <coughs> wow. mm -hmm. Oh, Danny's such a good sport. Another great realistic movie about cops win since paperwork is the most underrepresented part of police work and Edgar even keeps it interesting. I think I've probably said this before about Edgar Wright, but I love to see directors improve their craft and challenge themselves. This was his second major film, unless you count A Fistful of Fingers, which you probably should. But it was his follow-up to Shaun of the Dead, so he figured, why not do a push-in match cut? And then they did. But what? You're telling me those aren't thigh masters for bunnies? Lock me up. I'm sorry? I'm a slasher. You're a what? A slasher. 
prices. And also following suit with Shaun of the Dead, this time one of the main baddies, who's actually presented as a red herring, tells us the truth about himself right away. Plus he's planting the fun run evidence of his superior speed in our brains too. My discount's a criminal. Catch me later! There's a reason we accommodate a few of the younglings at the pub. The greater good. The greater good. Yep, two for two. Can't say it just once. Also, is the greater good that they become Jedi? If you were the younglings at the pub. Your predecessor assumed that rural policing was easy. Ended up having a nervous breakdown. <laughs> so that means he also figured out what was going on and they just said he was crazy and murdered him. I like that they don't have to be particularly sneaky or really care about getting caught because they can just kill whoever finds out. Precisely. Huh. Dark. And he had one thing you haven't got. What's that, sir? A great big bushy beard! Ah, that's better. Slughorn can always lighten the mood. Ah, crap, I did it again. How about a trip to the Andes? <laughs> the embedded subtitles actually say Andes, like the mountains, which means Danny has a point. Wondering why we call them the Andes. They're both called Andrew. Also, because talking to them is an uphill struggle, innit, Dad? <laughs> The only swear word not censored is the one where if your mother heard you, she'd tell you she wouldn't see you next Tuesday. Well, in America. And some solid descriptors for Sergeant Tony, Sean Zombie Slayer. It makes sense that the NWA system is more sophisticated than the whole of the police station, the real heart of the operation, as it were. Because we all sell apples around here, don't we? Your dad sells apples, Andy. And raspberries. <laughs> when Rafe was on screen for a few minutes in Sean, we all should have known he'd be one of the comedic highlights here. Can't wait to jump into Sergeant Popwell's grave. Even the detectives who don't know what's going on know what's going on. Have you been stabbed, Sergeant Fisher? No. Well, I have. He was, by Peter Jackson Santa. Ah, and here goes Danny predicting the whole movie again. You ever fired the two guns whilst jumping through the air? Ever been in high-speed pursuit? You ever fired a gun whilst in high-speed pursuit? Goodness, this entire scene has Frank just looming in the background, never cracking a smile, completely revealing that he's bad if you're noticing him. He, you're quite the marksman. Perhaps you might like to join us for a shoot one day. He does. Twice, technically. Aw, they send him home with a giant flower arrangement. Honestly, I can understand why they didn't want to let Leslie go. P.I. Staker. Yeah. Right. Piss Taker. Come on! Yes, Mr. Staker. I'd only complain because Stephen Merchant is underutilized, but really, I can't think of a better role for him than the guy who's missing a swan. Oh. <laughs> it's no orangutan, but it's pretty decent. Ask yourself, why has he got his hat pulled down like that? He's f ugly. <laughs> Honesty. Or he doesn't want you to see his face. Because he's f ugly. So much honesty. Shaun of the Dead, but Espanol. Edgar Wright Stockport. Yeah. I'll be honest, it wasn't until Maisie Williams, Arya Stark, pointed out that the hound was Lurch that I actually put that together. May their heads be struck from their shoulders. Some will. You mothers. <laughs> Look, the mother's gag is great, but you're always laughing so hard at that, you probably miss Danny reaches out to brace himself on Angel and misses just as Angel takes off again. <laughs> With practice, you too can become a master fence flipper. <laughs> you almost had it. I really appreciate that the Swan case is a genuine priority for Angel to the bitter end. He's just biding his time to solve it. I'm simply suggesting that uh, young Peter be given a second chance before he becomes just another crime statistic. <laughs> that works both ways. The best way to keep kids from doing more crime is to keep their records clean. Or kill them. And then your town stats look good for Village of the Year. The church is just so often there, peering out of the background. Spare for Danny too. Hey! <laughs> Happy-go-lucky, slightly doofy Nick Frost might be favorite Nick Frost. Everyone sitting behind Angel and Danny is the NWA, and Bernard the owner is still sleeping. I can't care about it. <laughs> Angel's face. Sincere apologies for earlier. It's quite all right, Mr. Blower. Drive safe. You know, that's the bloke we done for speeding earlier. Yeah. Astute observations from Danny. And honestly, I sometimes feel like Nick and Simon can't help but let their real relationships through. Angel just breezes right past and lets Danny have that one. Ah, decaffeination shadowing. Decaffeinated. News travels fast. I love struggling, Romeo. Dire Straits is back, and this time they're not just Zed Word fodder. Dire Straits. Throw it. <laughs> Danny came through on the Chunky Monkey. We won't be short of Chunky Monkey for the next month. Fun fact, neither Rafe nor Patty smoked in real life, but took it up for the movie. Sort of like a Tom Cruise win. Unimpeded devotion to realism? Martin Blower would lose control of his car and not think to apply the brakes. <laughs> Just the reactions alone in this movie. <laughs> So Filch is a parcel tongue too? Oh, that's three. I'm done now. Since I exhausted the joke and shared actors. I suppose. I suppose. Yes, I suppose. Compared to Incomprehensible 1 and Incomprehensible 2, Posh Danny is best Danny. 
Hmm, this, this sounds familiar. Is this the hedge he cut without permission? Meaning they wouldn't have made it if he hadn't? Uh, it's the same author, just like it's the same actor. One got an M, one got curly hair, and a worse disposition. A pint of lager, please. <laughs> yeah, Roy! Shameless Shaun of the Dead reference, which was itself a shameless Flavor Flav reference, and this is just a shameless reference. You're better off not upsetting Frank too much. Also, do you think they named him Roy just for this joke? What made you want to be a policeman? Officer. What made you want to be a policeman officer? Uh huh. that's the first time Angel laughs at Danny. He bought me a police pedal car when I was five. Hey, we even saw that pedal car earlier. You must keep it as a reminder of that clear sense of right and wrong that I felt at the wheel of that pedal car. Apart from the summer of 1979 when I wanted to be Kermit the Frog. It's a shame. How so? I think you would have made a great Muppet. <laughs> okay, so the second laugh is even sweeter. Do you mind if I ask how she died? Traffic collision. And not only is Danny using the proper verbiage as Angel instructed, he's also alluding to the idea that his mom's death wasn't an accident. Traffic collision. Hey, why can't we see accident again? Because accident implies there's nobody to blame. And a drinking beer montage is the fastest way to lose half a beer and expand your American action cinema knowledge base. Point Break or Bad Boys 2? Uh, which one do you think I'll prefer? No, I mean, which one do you want to watch first? Let's say we drink to their demise. James Bond as the parody version of a Dr. Evil type villain who can't ever stop revealing his evil. Oh, he'll be in bits tomorrow. We did get a little drunk. <laughs> Obviously, all the foreshadowing and callbacks are amazing, but I especially love this one because Danny gets so drunk that he comments on the self referential nature of the movie in universe. You get a little drunk. This is me. <sighs> These two. Another lovely match cut. Miss a few dinners, you know, parties at her <laughs> dad's funeral. <laughs> Danny's little chuckle. This relationship is so natural even as they're building it. You shouldn't eat late at night. Oh, I don't know, quite like a little midnight gobble. <laughs> <laughs> See, PC Bob Walker thinks jokes need to be clarified sometimes as well. Put the old top off. I've had my top off in his lay boy. <laughs> <laughs> Some more of the killers just loitering in the background again. Like in the films. Something like something out of background. You know, it's really tiring that you Brits constantly have to equate things to American movies. It'd be like if I felt the need to compare this to the explosion of Hogwarts. Also, Backdraft is dope. <laughs> Best use of a locked off camera ever. The focus starts to drift to the background, but even then the drum beat hits again as he comes back. Again, out in the open, just saying how he'll splat the guy who's ratting him out. There's our cowboys. Don't forgive me, I'm something of a wild west nut. Take out all the little people. You get to waltz off with the cuddly monkey. And another plot breakdown, since Angel does shoot all the little people and waltzes off with his cuddly monkey, Danny. Tim! Isn't it though? Hello. That's brutal. Not interviewing everyone who was at the bank. Oh, he's got short circuit. <laughs> it's these under the breath lines that'll get you on the 11th watch. And Danny's still got his mini cowboy hat on under the rain cap. Andy 1 is under the umbrella and dry, while Andy 2 is trying to smoke and is completely soaking wet. It's high time you realize that. You and your monkey. Did he mean me or that? I mean, who could blame him? <laughs> Man, something that becomes evident the more you watch this movie 14th time is that Danny isn't the simple character he comes off as at first. Yes, he's obsessed with American depictions of cop action movies, but really quickly he's learning from Angel what it really means to be a policeman officer, and for now that's reading the handbook. Thanks for the monkey. What was it? I want it for you. Goodness, I love these two. So they basically solve the entire case. The actual motives are always the less important piece of information because who would ever be this petty? Terrible speller. Oh yeah? Bad actor. Undoubtedly. Distinctive laugh. True. Dubious mansion. Maybe they were all accidents. Oh. Respected solicitor. Affirmatron. Wow. I have been agreeing with stuff wrong all my life. And tells me this land is very valuable. Ten times what George Merchant and Martin Blower got rest them all. Anne Reed hasn't been in the movie barely at all so far, and us uncultured Yanks assume she was nobody, and then she drops one of the greatest sidebar monologues ever got rest of. As far as I'm concerned, Cousin Sissy can go and Would you just failure to remember your notepad censoring? Which is even another reference back since he had it out with Martin Blower to be used as a weapon, but when he actually needed it for its intended purpose, remembering lots of confusing details, he forgot it in the car. Wait, what was that? Was that a front handspring? I'm starting to realize that the entire point of this movie is that whatever you think is happening, whoever you think is the bad guy, is. His black cape is in the background right there. And his cowboy pistols he uses later. Consumed with concern for your business and potential disloyalty from fickle customers. And again, this entire denouement is way more sophisticated and complicated than reality, even though Angel was right that Skinner is a murderer. Table down sort of flapper. Nevertheless. <laughs> that look! Same exact headcock, same smile. 
Not conspicuous at all posing with today's paper for the camera. No luck catching them killers then. No luck catching them swans then. It's just the one killer actually. It's just the one swan actually. Oh, I do love that a repeated line from earlier that should actually land as a joke now since Danny and the shopkeeper using the same exact inflection in their line reads is also a plot point reveal. One killer actually. Oh, I got brainwave. Get us back to the station, now! Come on, you got brain freeze? <laughs> Finally, the Cornettos do what they're created for. Face Off comes to mind, obviously Mission Impossible 2, pretty much anything with Chow Young Fat. Let's call it accidental woo. Hey, Biggin. Playtime's over. Yeah, he's still Biggin from Andy. Pipe down, Biggin. Narp. That's some quick second language mastery. Frank, this shit just got real. It's just a gag, but I also love that it isn't just Danny picking up stuff from Angel. It's also going the other way, and if you can quote Martin Lawrence, you quote Martin Lawrence. It just got real. God! What happened to you, Peace Lily? And a true friend who would remember how important that plant was to him. Oh, I beg to differ, Mr. Weaver. It fits into the story so well that they're just meeting in their hoods at the church, no reason to have anyone on watch because there's never any threat to them and Angel is supposed to be dead now. Not even any urgency at all, catching up on the church tea announcement from last time. Janet Barker has just given birth to twins. Oh. Janet Barker has decided to call her boys Roger and Martin. It's all about the greater good. The greater good. And obviously, now we get to the truly culty double greater goods. How can this be for the greater good? The greater good. How can this be for the greater good? The greater good. Shut it! We begged him in vain to make his residence more in keeping with the village's rustic aesthetic. Like we said, they solved all the cases earlier, but Angel was even closer to the very specific complaint before that. It's hardly in keeping with the village's rustic aesthetic. Oh, I wouldn't say that. And you thought the reveals were over. The joke was that it was all of them, but you forgot about the one with the most motivation of all. Well you, well, you didn't know his motivation yet, but you still forgot. Whatever the cost, we would make Sanford great again. Oh, no, no. Oh, no, 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 no. I'll make sure everyone gets their justice. Such an innocuous line from earlier that proves to be totally sinister. And if you actually take it at face value, you'd assume it would be similar to Danny's penance, which was dessert. <laughs> Nailing his art even in death. Danny! That's like Danny taking the lesson about the notepad to heart and then adding further profundity to what Angel said. This is the most important piece of equipment you will ever own. While still getting a sweet flipbook out of it. We can do it together! Uh, you and me! Forget it, Nicholas. It's Sanford. Sanford, Chinatown. Well, there's a shot, the tail light fading off of Danny's face as he slowly turns away. And there's your blue Cornetto wrapper. Everybody and their mums is packing around there. Like who? Farmers? Who else? From his mum's. He wasn't lying. Can't say I expected to see Simon Pegg dropkick an old lady in the face, the irony being that they didn't use this opportunity when they could have had his Edward old lady in the last one. What are you gonna do? Just walk in and arrest the whole village? Not exactly. Oh, well I see you've already arrested the old village. Not exactly. Both times the question was ridiculous and both times exactly. he answers truthfully. So it's probably been weird to see Oscar winner Olivia Coleman constantly being so lewd, but even when it's just a few frames, you can guess it's not meant for minors. Ha! 999 is their passcode, which would be like the passcode here being 911. And after a million everyday task quick cuts, Edgar finally gets to do an actual quick cut weaponry gearing up montage. So very little happens that no one even looks up to care about what's going on. I mean, Frank does think he's dead. Hey, the professional actors are on the new poster. Okay, so everyone's at the same post from his morning run. The doctor at the trunk of his car, the priest in front of his church with the real actors, then the woman on her bike, and even Billy Whitelaw gets taken out by the plant she was watering earlier. Now that's some aggressive cycling, met with aggressive door opening. That's what I'm talking about. And Danny finally gets the action movie life he's always wanted. Fascist! Fascist. The most over the top callback of all time. Hag. Hag. You're a doctor. Deal with it. He's a doctor, he can deal with it. Pellet wound, exploded toes, eh, same difference. I mean, does it ever stop? Is anything not some kind of reference? But now we start getting into the things that Angel has really learned from Danny and John Woo. Still cowboying it up. He isn't even from round here! Ah, and the ultimate sin, especially for a cowboy. Longer we wait, more time they got to mobilize. I say we go in through the front entrance, take the place all boy oil. They won't be expecting that. Tony finally proves all those whiteboard descriptors wrong. For once. I guess everyone has learned something from Angel. Her. Actually, Angel is just good at taking control at a crime scene, while combat siege and strategy seems to be more up Tony's alley. I'm my. Here come the fuzz. And they're hot. 
All right, now we're getting an action hero. He's in the freezer. Let's just say cool off. No, I didn't say anything, actually. Shame. Distracted him with the cuddly monkey. And then I, I said, playtime's over. And I hit him with the peace lily. You're off the f***ing chain! <laughs> Compliment. My teamwork with cover fire and everything. This parody movie has become a decent actual cop movie. Nothing like a bit of girl on girl. <laughs> Queen Elizabeth, everyone. But it's actually a statement about this movie that is just all star back to front that her main thing is just innuendo in the background. For, wait, was, was that a Margaret Thatcher joke? <laughs> and Tony didn't get it. Watch that yep. It's Edgar and Simon's mums. Danny really takes the car shootout to a new level with his own sound effects. Bang, bang, or the ginger nut gets it! Ah! Every little detail is the anti-cop thriller. Not even a hostage situation goes the way it's supposed to. You gotta watch out for those whips when you go up against Prince Baron. For the record, that sound effect is in there. I didn't add it. Cause it's still a bit stiff. How's the hand? Still a bit stiff. Still a bit stiff. Still a bit stiff. Even the broken water line adds that always a win final fight scene in the rain. We'll put a call into Aaron A. Aronson, shall we? What's your name? Aaron A. Aronson. Sorry? Hey, he found him. It's really hard. <laughs> Honesty. Normally this would kill someone in a movie, but if you miss all the arteries, it's just gonna hurt really bad. Yeah, well don't worry, there's plenty of ice cream at the station. Ah, there is, because someone else broke the law a little tiny bit. Let's just say that we won't be short of Junkie Monkey for the next month! I love that this was just another in a long list of dumb things Danny thought real cops were supposed to do, and then he confirms it for Angel by showing him point break. But then also, this is a totally believable reason for him to fire his gun up in the air and go ah. And to put a cherry on it, it's not just that he's angry at the situation and doesn't want to shoot his dad, it's also that if he didn't fire his gun, technically Angel could take the gun and shoot Frank, but this way he's actually going a step further in protecting his dad. Come on. And now the proof that Angel taking every case seriously leads to good things in the end. Ah, uh, Frank is a little shame there, doesn't he? Oh, and it turns out swans do break arms. Maybe it was the swan. Apparently, they can break a man's arm. <laughs> Bear Trap Roy is okay. Guidelines state that we say staff and not manpower, because uh, manpower's a bit sexist. You don't mind a bit of manpower, do you, Doris? Oh, dirty bastard! You hold your tongue in front of Queen Anne. <laughs> Plays a lot of queens, huh? Self-sacrifice. Oh god, no. And comeuppance. Although it's making me realize that he's the only one to die and it was an accident. Which is even weirder when you consider that all the people that were murdered it was made to look like an accident. <laughs> Bricks are broken and displaced, but everyone inside is totes fine. A Michael Bay explosion if I've ever seen one. Hedgehog from the right gear room is good to go. Hot fuzz on top of the cop car and on the stick shift. They're lovely. Danny's alive. Angel still has his glasses on, adding to the list of things he was missing that he got from Danny's action movie expertise. Seems like a fitting song. Hot Fuzz, another silly name for a movie that knows it's so good it can have a silly name. I called it a parody in the video, and while I'm too lazy to go back and fix that, I honestly think parody is pretty reductive. It's a comedic homage that still hits all the best benchmarks of a Tony Scott action flick. Yes, I'm sucking up to Edgar because he loves Tony Scott, but come on. It sends up the mystery side of those action movies in the best possible way by creating an elaborate and believable scheme for Angel and Danny to solve, and then saying, no, no, you actually had it before, but then pulls the rug out again with Frank. It's a masterclass in film. And there's a Venn diagram in business that you've probably seen before, but it specifically applies well to filmmaking, sometimes called the project management triangle. There are three main categories in regard to the production of a product, and you can only pick two. Cheap, fast, and good. If it's made quickly and the end product is good, it's going to cost you lots of money. If it's cheap and good, it's going to take you a long time to make, and if it's both cheap and fast, it's probably going to be a bad final product. Except, not with Hot Fuzz. Somehow on a $12 million budget in four weeks, Edgar Wright created a masterpiece. Now, I'll say this ignores that Simon and Edgar wrote the movie for 18 months, so that's not super fast, but the execution of actually shooting the film was not nearly as drawn out. Some details I breezed over in the main section, Edgar's use of sound effects. It's like a taste of what he would eventually do in Scott Pilgrim. I especially love this one added for Dalton's accidental eye contact with the camera. Of course. But even the more subtle ones, like when Danny is excited to hear Angel has been stabbed. Well, I have. I mentioned a few of the blink and you'll miss them moments, but Danny taking out his nightstick for the swan is top tier. Love the way Angel throws his hat before taking off on the chase. And then probably just the funniest scene I skipped, this merry-go-round with the money. The performances are all pitch perfect. 20 quid. There you go. Yeah. And there's your change. God bless you. Although this is a runner-up. And are they as big as he is? Who? The mum and the sister. Same person. In the jokes I missed that you loved section, the every year joke is great. When's your birthday? 
22nd of February. What year? Every year. Get out. Y'all called me out for missing this one, even though it was the award from Shaun of the Dead's video, and the point of the win here was that he learned how to flip over fences since he tried it in Shaun. Also, I got a couple comments about every frame of paintings video on Edgar Wright, and obviously I was a fan. I don't remember this video, but I did say some similar stuff. I mean, I, I literally just did these two movies with those exact traveling details, so it was on my mind, but it's definitely possible it slipped into my head back in 2014. So go watch that video for even more detail. I think one of my favorite revelations about this movie is that the original screenplay had a female love interest for Angel that was ultimately cut for time, but her lines were just given to Danny with very few changes. And it works so well. It would probably never be allowed in a non-comedic action movie, but it's acknowledgement of that unspoken romantic love that often pops up in buddy cop movies. And it also makes Angel and Danny the sweetest relationship ever. It exudes from their history anyway, but it ends up being a carryover from Shaun of the Dead as well, a movie that ends with Nick and Simon continuing their friendship into... Well, Ed's afterlife. I mentioned it briefly, but there are only passing moments of Angel and Danny at each other's throats, as is the usual staple for buddy cop movies. But for the most part, Angel is sweet with Danny and realized pretty early on that he's trying to learn from him. The Hollywood cliche is that you need conflict of personality for these types of movies to work and be funny. And while they're different people for sure, it doesn't take long for them to actually embrace whatever it is that makes the other one special. The entire final act is Angel realizing that sometimes police work is jumping through the air firing two guns in high-speed shootouts. Interestingly, Danny's problem isn't that he's a dunce, even though he comes off that way sometimes. He's not a bad cop, he's just had terrible mentors. There are no real cops in this department because they've never needed them. The NWA takes care of all the crime, and it only took Danny a short time with Angel to become a pretty great cop. And multiple times he shows that he, at the very least, has a pretty great memory. We just sat through three hours of so-called acting, Constable. Their kiss was the only convincing moment in it. We sat through three hours of so-called acting last night. And the kiss was the only convincing moment in it. Well, we can't accept gifts from somebody we've officially rebuked, so... Yeah, we can't accept gifts from someone we've officially rebuked, so... Uh... <laughs> Other YouTubers, my buddy Mikey, have gone more in-depth on Danny, but I love that he's simply so much more than the movie pretends. So, that's Hot Fuzz. After doing all three of the Cornetto trilogy, I can say that this is safely my favorite. And if you're still itching for more Cornetto trilogy, I also combined the two-parter of The World's End, and it's up right now, live. And at the end of that one will be the teaser for next week. Thanks for watching. You've never taken a shortcut before.